Dynamic programming is one of the most notorious subjects in algorithms, and for a reason. Many programmers looking for their first job pray that this subject won't be asked about during their interview. And many computer science students feel incredible frustration solving exercises about it. To understand dynamic programming, you have to first understand recursion. the concept of a function calling itself. Here, we have a function that prints boo and then calls itself. If we run it, we will just get an endless loop of prints without an end. This is not very useful on its own, but with some modifications, this concept can help us solve problems that can be described as a collection of a number of sub-problems of the same type. A good example is uh, the Fibonacci sequence that starts with 1 and 1, and from there, each number is the sum of the previous two. So, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and so on. The reason that this is a good problem to solve with recursion is that finding the nth element in the sequence requires finding the nth minus 1 and the nth minus 2 elements, and summing them. But, of course, to find each of those, you have to break them apart as well into sub-problems, which in turn will be subdivided. A good way to think about the process of recursion is by using a tree, where the final answer is the root. So, if we use recursion to find the fourth element in the Fibonacci sequence, we will have to first find the third element and the second element, and sum them. We know the second element in the sequence, and we know that it equals 1, but to find the third element, you have to find the second element and the first element, which uh, as well we know. It's 1 and 1. Knowing this, we know that the third element equals 2, and knowing that, we know that the fourth element equals 3. These leaf nodes of the recursion tree are of special importance, because they prevent the recursion from running forever. They are known as the base cases of the recursion, because they are the most basic version of the problem, which means we don't need to call the function again to solve them. We already know the answer for them. To know the third element, we have to call the function twice, but for the second and first element, we already know the answer. It's one. That's, give, that's given to us as part of the problem description. Now, let's see the code for generating the Fibonacci sequence with Python. First, we define a function named solve Fibonacci, that takes the index of the element in the sequence whose value we want to compute, and take care of the base cases, the instances of the problem when, when we won't have to divide it into sub-problems. In this case, it's when we want the first or the second element, with indexes 0 or 1 respectively. If this is the case, we simply return the known value. But if it's not the base case, we have to solve the problem by dividing it into smaller problems. First, we apply our function to find the element with index n-1, and then to find n-2. After we have them, we simply add the result and return it. Once I get used to it, recursion becomes a very elegant and natural way of solving this kind of problems. But many times, recursion hides a dark secret within its short and tempting code. Let's look at the recursion tree one more time, this time for finding the eighth element of the sequence. To find it, we need the seventh and sixth elements, and we can continue to add more and more levels to the recursion tree. When we examine this tree, we observe something interesting. The subtree, starting from the sixth element, appears 
several times. We compute it here, but also here. This means we make a whole lot of computations that we already did, which means going over them again is redundant. Those overlapping subproblems appear many times, for example, with the fifth element. Those extra computations are making the whole process much more computationally expensive than it, than it needs to be. Specifically, each problem is divided to two subproblems, so our initial single problem leads to two extra computations, which themselves split to two extra subproblems, four in total, and so on, n times, which means the computational complexity of the recursion algorithm is 2 to the power of n, which is exponential, which is quite bad. This finally brings us to dynamic programming, which is a way to utilize the fact that there, are, there is an overlap between the subproblems to speed up the algorithm by making sure we won't have to do to solve the same subproblem twice. There are two main methods for achieving that goal. Memorization and looping, also known as the top-down and the bottom-up approaches. They both achieve the same goal, preventing redundant computations. And they do equally well at it, but they differ in the way of thinking. Memorization sounds like memorization, and for a good reason. The idea here is to create an object that can be a table, or a dictionary, or a list, or whatever, and store within this object the solutions to subproblems we already computed, so we won't have to repeat them. For example, if we solve the subproblem of finding the fourth element in the Fibonacci sequence, which equals 3, we now store this result in a memo object, so when we face the same subproblem again, we will just pull the result out of the memoization uh, dictionary and we won't have to compute it again. Let's see this approach implemented in code. First, we create the function that now also accepts a memo object that will be a dictionary. This function needs to return the memo table, so when a subproblem is solved, it will be available for the function that called it. To better understand this, let's look at the recursion tree. If we store the value for the sixth element after computing it, we then return it to the function that solves the eighth element, that will pass it to the function that solves the, fifth, the seventh element, and therefore we won't have to compute the sixth element again. This is why we will always return the memo table as well, even when dealing with the base cases. Now, we need to check if the subproblem we are trying to solve is in the memo dictionary. If it is, we just extract the answer. But if it isn't, we need to actually solve the subproblem and store the result in the memo table, or in this case dictionary, for future use. This is all for memoization. Now let's look at looping. The idea behind looping is to get rid of recursion altogether and replace it with a loop. Using a loop, we iterate over the subproblems the, from the smallest one, building our way up to the one we actually want to solve. From the perspective of the tree, we start with the base cases, the first and the second elements in the sequence, and use them to compute the third element. Now we can use this new result to compute the fourth element, and so on. If we are looking for the nth item, it's easy to see that this will take n steps, which means this computation has big O of n, which is linear time, far superior to our exponential time from before. This is also the reason the complexity of the memorization approach is linear as well. We only have 
uh, to solve for each number twice. Uh, I'm sorry, we only have to solve for the each number once. Now, let's look at, the, at implementing the looping or bottom-up approach in Python. We start, as usual, by defining the function and taking care of all the base cases, the first and the second elements. Then, we loop n minus 1 times, since this is the number of computations we will have to do to compute the nth element. And we can now compute the next number in the sequence and add it to the elements we already know. When we are done, we just print the result, the last number computed. This is it for the first part of our journey into dynamic programming. In the next chapter, we will tackle a very famous and significantly harder problem for, from computer science, the knapsack problem, using the recursion approach. In the third and, for now, final part, we will look at equally famous and marginally even harder problem, the traveling salesman problem, uh, in bottom-up approach or looping approach. If you want to get notified when I release them, which will be very soon, you can subscribe to the channel. Thank you for listening and see you soon.